G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Welcome to this training session and I've got an interesting one for you today. So let's say you're in a situation where you've got a library, a document library that is full of documents. There might be certain folders and that type of thing in there as well. Uh, and you need to bulk rename documents in that library. So rather than having to do it one by one or jump into data sheet mode uh, or that type of thing and rename documents manually, if we wanted to say add today's date to uh, all of these documents, so keep the file name, but just add a um, you know a today's date or some other type of, of system or naming system to all of those files. How do we do that? Um, well, we can use Power Automate and we can use a manual trigger uh, to get all of those documents, get today's date, and then um, utilize uh, the copy and delete functions or, or steps, actions in Power Automate to be able to achieve the result that we're looking for. So let's dive in and we'll, I'm gonna walk through how we go about setting this type of scenario up. So we can see here, here is our uh, document library. It's full of documents, right? So I'm just gonna delete this folder uh, first. So let's just get rid of this and then we'll jump into Power Automate. So let's jump into Power Automate. We'll create a new uh, flow here and let's just go for an instant cloud flow. We'll just do a, a manual trigger and let's go rename documents because we don't really want to do this on a schedule. It might be a once off thing or it might be something we, we just need to do one time only as opposed to doing it on a recurring thing. So we'll just go manually trigger a flow like this. And then what we want to do is we want to iterate over the documents in this document library. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the SharePoint um, connector here like so and we're going to get the get files so we're going to iterate over our files and we only need the properties okay so let's get the properties um, and we'll pass in the site address so the site address that we're doing here is move documents I'm just going to copy the URL here because what we might do is we might just go enter custom value and we'll paste in the address here. Now the library name is just going to be the default document library because that's where our, uh, our libraries reside. So we will select documents and we will then go to the next step. So the next step that we want to do is we want to iterate and we want to get the file content because what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy the documents, rename the document and then delete the, uh, the, the existing one. All right. So we are going to use again a SharePoint uh, through the SharePoint connector. We're going to um, get the file content. So we need to get file content. Let's just scroll down and say get file content like so this one here and what we want to do is again we need to pass in the the uh, site so we'll enter a custom value and we'll just pop the site name in there and now the file identifier we need to pass in from the previous step so get files properties only what we've got here is an identifier uh, to identify the file and you can see that it automatically wraps this in and apply to each because we're going to iterate over all of these files. So we're getting the file content. Now, part of this dynamic value of this step here is um, that there's a property there called file name with extension. All right, so we need to get that. But the problem there is we need to extract the file extension because when we're creating a file, we need to pass in the existing file extension. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a compose action, uh, compose operation here. And we will do this one like so. Now, what we want to do, and we want to pass in this input of the file name with extension. So I'm going to search for this file name with extension, like so. We're going to um, use that as the uh, as the input. Now, we need to add in another compose uh, operation here because we need to extract and split out the uh, the file extension. So let's add another compose action here. Now. What we need to do is, is write a little expression. Now I'm going to copy the expression uh, and paste that in this uh, section here. So what we can see here is we're using the, uh, we're using last 
and then we're splitting the output of the previous action, which is compose, right? So I'm just gonna rename this and we'll pop in compose like so, because that's the name of that previous, uh, the, the output that we're gonna pass in from that step. And then we're gonna delimit that on the, the period, right? So the, the last, uh, however many characters up to that period will extract that, okay? So we're gonna okay that, and that's this now, this new section. What we might do just to clean things up a little bit, and we'll go back, we should have done this at the start. So let's just go get file, um, get file name with, with extension extension like so and we're going to need to change this second compose action too so i'm just going to copy um copy that and that's just deleted it so let's just go uh, get file name with extension and we'll enter that that's now renamed it so now in this compose 2 let's just rename this as well just to tidy things up uh, let's just call this split and get extension and we will need to now just change this expression so we just need to pass in get file name with extension like so all right and we'll update that and we are now good to go so the next action that we're going or the next operation that we're going to add here is uh, to create a file so we're going to create a file again using the SharePoint uh, connector we will create file like so. And the site address, again, we just need to pass in this site address. So I'm just gonna grab the URL one more time. We'll pop down to enter custom value and we'll paste in the site address. The folder path here, so we could pick a different folder path as well. But what we're going to do is just dump it into the same location. So let's just go to um, mm, 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 shared documents. That's the one we want. We want to, now this is where we can craft our, um, our file name. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna keep the, the same file name, but we wanna add in a date, all right? So let's pass in name. Now, what we haven't done, and what I'm gonna go back up to the top here, is we are going to, first of all, get the current time. Now, there's an action here that we can use, and we're going to use current time. And that is going to get the current time. Okay, we don't need to pass in anything. But what we wanna do is we want to then convert this to our time zone. So I'm going to use convert uh, time zone as this operation. So convert time zone, we want to pass in the base time of current time from the previous step. The source um, is probably go is going to, we're gonna use uh, UTC. So let's just scroll up to 000, which is this one here. And the destination time zone, I'm in Melbourne, so I'm gonna go plus 10, which will be Canberra, Melbourne, Sydney this one here, and we can then choose the format that we want. So I'm just gonna choose, let's go short date pattern, like so, all right? So we will actually, let's just have a look at a different type of pattern, maybe with some dashes in it. Let's go for, no, nah, we'll leave it as that, okay? So we'll leave it as current, time all right so now if i scroll down the bottom here we want to create the file the name we want to go dash we want we then want to paste in the current time or the current date all right so let's just go date um actually let's scroll down we'll find this like so here it is converted so converted time we'll pass in that we need to put in the period like so and we want to pass in the output of the get of the split and get extension so if we scroll back up the top i think it was up the top here here it is there so we want to split and we uh, get extension we want the output of that so we want to pass in that now the file content Remembering we're getting the, we got the file content um, up the top here. So if we scroll down to the dynamic values 
and go file content and we want to pass in that file content. So that's creating that file for us. Now the last step in our process is going to be to delete that um, the, the source file, so the, the starting file. So again, we're going to choose SharePoint as the connector and we will look for delete file like so. Here it is. And again, we're going to pass in the site address uh, and let's go enter custom value and we'll paste in the site address Now the file identifier. Again, we need to pass in that. So identifier from the get files properties um, action and we are then good to go. So let's now save this and we'll jump into this library here. So we've got all of these files. What we might do is just, let's just delete a few so that it doesn't take so long to process. So let's just delete all of these. So we've now got three files here that we should have uh, renamed. Um, mm, 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 so right, correct the, so when we've, what have we done here? Split and get extension, correct to include the valid reference, a so split and get extension. So let's just have a look at what, what's happened here. Okay. So I've just redone this expression here. Um, I've just renamed this compose, uh, action here and just renamed this as well. And we are saved and we're good to go. So let's give this a test. We'll give it a manual test. We will test this off like so. And well, it'll ask us to sign in just to authorize the connector. Let's run the flow and we'll see what we are outputted with. All right, so it's running, it's running, it's running. And it's applying to each here. And if we jump back into the SharePoint site, what we're gonna see here is the new user guide has been done, all right? So we can see here 13th to the 12th um, and the other ones should be following. We'll just give this a bit of a refresh. And you can see here that all of these files have now been recreated. So with and have inserted that date as well as the file extension. Now, if I go and have a look at the, uh, maybe let's go and have a look at the recycle bin. Now, I'm not sure if this actually works, but we'll jump in and have a look. Um, so what we should see and we do is that those files are actually in the recycle bin as well. All right. So not only, um, have we copied and created new ones, we've deleted the old ones and they have moved into the recycle bin as well. So there we have it a way and a manual way or bulk way. If you need to, if you're in a scenario where you need to rename documents in bulk, um, whether it's a one-time thing or whether it's, it could potentially be when new files are added to, to document libraries as well. It just depends on the trigger that you want to, uh, you want to take action on. So um, there we go. Hope that brings you some value. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.